Now we are going to reassemble the lower shaft. First, rotate the pulley in rotation direction. Bring the needle to the inside stroke to the very bottom. Raise machine head back. Take a lower pulley. Insert into timing belt. Making sure that the screws on the pulley are located as so. Reinsert shaft. Now, tap shaft through slightly, then insert the cam. Groove is to the left. Once you have shaft installed, come over here to the collar, remove the screw, first screw in rotation, rotate the shaft until you find the flat. Make sure there's no in play. Reinsert screw. Right, second screw in rotation. Now, make sure that this gear is over to the left. Remove the first screw in rotation. No, I'm sorry. Just go ahead and lightly snug this down at the moment. Then find first screw in rotation on this cam. Find the flat. Reinsert screw and tighten. Tighten second screw in rotation. Before you tighten the screws on this gear, push to the left and just lightly snug. There are no flats for these two for these screws. This is where you make your adjustment for your looper timing. Now we will tighten the idler pulley. Push down and tighten screw. Do not put excessive pressure on belt. Now we are going to reinstall the belt cover and the wicks.
up on there. Now we're going to insert the shaft. This shaft has four, uh, three flats. It should go into the machine like so. The collar has a shiny side. The shiny side goes towards the rod. Now we will tighten the screws down on the flat. Making sure that this is rod is pushed to the right. By using the collar we will turn the shaft so that we will be on the flats on the two screws that fasten the rod down or shaft down. And Tighten the screws down. Now we will go down here. Find first screw in rotation. And tighten the cam down. And now second screw. Now we are reinstalling the wick. After the wick is installed, lower the machine to make sure that it goes down into the reservoir. Without hitting. This wick goes into the reservoir located here. Now we are going to install the spreader driving mechanism like so. And now the shaft. This shaft is the same as this shaft located here. It has three flats on it too. All right. So we will insert the shaft like so from this direction. Then we will put the shiny side this way. Locate the flats. Take 
Tighten it down. And also the flats on the shaft itself. Always keeping pressure towards the right. Now that that is completed, we will retire our wick. With the um, lower uh, shaft and cam installed, we we're going to rotate the pulley, bring the needle to its lowest position, raise the machine head back, loosen the screw on the belt gear, and rotate the cam so that the hole in the cam and the hole in the casting line up. We will insert an Allen wrench into the casting, move the cam, insert the Allen wrench there, and tighten the cam down and remove the Allen wrench. When making adjustment to the looper timing cam, you must loosen this screw and also this screw located here so that the cam can be adjusted. Once you have reinstalled the, the uh, upper and lower shaft with the new timing belt, then we set the cam with the Allen wrench. You must go back and recheck and reset the looper timing. Just because we have set the timing with the ruler, I mean with the Allen wrench in the uh, hole in the casting and the hole in the cam, this does not mean that the adjustment is finished. To, read, to adjust looper timing, refer to looper adjustments that we have already covered. We have just got through replacing the timing belt. So now we must go back and reset our looper to timing. So I'm going to rotate the needle bar to the inside stroke to its very lowest position. I am going to bring my calipers up here and take the measurement from the top of the cap here to the top of the needle bar. Then I will clear the calipers and I'll put in a measurement of 2.7. With 2.7 on the caliper, I will rotate fully in rotation direction till the needle bar strikes the bottom of the caliper. At that point in time, 
my looper should be center of my needle. But as you can see, I'm slightly slow. Now I will loosen the cam and advance the cam to speed up my looper timing. Loosen the screws on the timing belt gear. And adjust cam. Bring the needle bar to its lowest position on the inside stroke. Rotate the pulley so that the needle bar strikes the bottom of the caliper. Looper should be center of the needle. Continue to rotate the pulley. Bring the needle bar to its lowest position. Reinstall the caliper and continue to turn the pulley so that the needle bar strikes the bottom of it and the looper should be center of needle. Once you have uh, finished your adjustment, raise the machine head back. Make sure that the first screw in rotation is flat, I mean tight. Move to the second screw in rotation and tighten it. Now, we'll lower the machine head back down. During our initial um, belt replacement, we had loosened the two screws that hold the hammer in place so that we could get clearance between the hammer and the shaft on the fork inside the head. So now we will bring the hammer back to its original home position. Loosen the screw that is holding the hammer over to the right. And screw the screw on the right hand side in to bring the hammer back to where it should be. By using both screws we can get the hammer center with a knife. Once you have found center, Now we want the nut down on the left hand side. Lightly tighten the screw on the right. And snug the nut. Making sure that we're center of the knife. Also, when we tighten the nuts here, we want to make sure that we have no left to right motion in the hand. Also, we want to make sure that the hammer is not tight and it's up and down movement. If this is too tight, what will happen is the knife will go down. When it starts to come back up, it will not go completely up. So therefore, when the machine starts to run, the feet, there's a possibility that the feet can hang uh, on the back side of the knife or hammer. Once you finish Replacing the timing belt and reinsert your wicks.
insert the wick here into the little hole, oil hole. I'll wake up through the hole there. Slide under here. This wick. Under here. Then put the wire holder over the top of the wig. Like so. Fasten it down. Now that you've reinstalled the wicks, it's time to reinstall the top cover. Slip your airlines on, your tension release cylinder. Reinstall the airline holder. And reattach the top cover. Now that we have reinstalled everything on the top side of the machine, we will go the machine head back and reinstall the thread guide for the lower thread. Now that we have finished installing the uh, belts and um, all the components, now is time to 
put the front cover on and the side cover on and also uh, would be a good time to put the machine in a slow speed and run the machine to make sure that it now we are going to show you how to remove the timing belt partially and then and also show you how to make adjustments. First, remove the front cover. Next, remove the knife plate. Next, remove Next, loose an idler. There are two three millimeter Allen screws which you must loosen. In order to remove the timing belt completely, if in the event that it were to break, these components here will have to be removed. This timing belt here will have to be removed. Once those are removed, loosen the screw on the gear located here and the collar located on the shaft here. Then raise machine head back and pull shaft, this shaft located here, down through the bottom. Then you will be able to reinsert. Now we will remove this bracket. Be very careful in the removal of this bracket. On each side of the bracket are two springs. Slide gently off. Remove bracket. The two springs. What we are doing now is not related to timing belt replacement or adjustment. We are just taking disassembling this so that for your reference. Now, once the springs are removed, we will slide these out. Being very careful that not to drop these washers into the machine. Now remove the washers. Note, on one of the washers, there'll be a touch of white paint. As you can see, the washer on the left does not have it, and the washer on the right did have it.
Also, if you lift the Masonic head back and you look underneath, located here is a spot of white paint and also on the block is a spot of white paint. The block with this dot, the washer, and this bracket here must, line, must be lined up in this order. Otherwise, binding of the needle bar may occur. The reason we moved these components from this area is in the event that we have excess of play in needle bar. We must get this block here to where we can move it and loosen these two Allen screws which hold these two pins. These pins keep the needle bar from moving left to right. Loosen the Allen screw on the left and the one on the right. There are flats located behind these. At this point in time we are able to turn the needle bar. You must do this procedure in the event that you want to replace the needle bar. When reinstalling needle bar, make sure that you apply a light amount of pressure. Tighten Allen screws. Then check to see if you have left to right movement in the needle bar. Also, make sure that the needle bar is not in a bind. Now we are going to reinstall the washer on the left along with the pin. Making sure that the pin falls into the groove on the block, like so. Now the washer on the right, which has the white paint on it, which corresponds with the paint on each of these two components. Reinstall the pin. making sure that it seats in the groove, like so. Now, reinstall the two springs and the bracket. Make sure that when bracket is reinstalled, that you turn the needle bar so that you're located with the hole for the thread located towards the back of the machine and make sure that this bracket is on the right hand side because we must have that over here so that we can set the, this position back at the end of adjustments. We will loosen the Allen screw 
holding this gear tight. Notice that when I loosen that gear, this gear move, moves up and down. So make sure when you reattach or, or retighten after adjustment that you put constant pressure upward when you tighten the screw. Now we will put belt back on. With this lined up, make sure that the screw is looking out. And reinstall belt. Now, tighten idler pulley. Now reinstall this bracket. Before tightening bracket, make sure that you apply up pressure here. Do not go get uh, do not have excessive pressure, just a light amount of pressure and tighten screws. The yellow paint located on these screws is a warning that this should not be adjusted but in the event of a timing belt breakage you must re loosen these. But it's a very important point that you must not get this pushed up too tight just a light amount of pressure. Once this adjustment is finished then Raise the sewing head back, leaving this screw on this gear loose. Raise the sewing head back. Loosen the screw here. Then rotate the pulley here. to as far as it will go till you feel it bottom out. Lower the sewing head. Then rotate the cedar. Let the timing mark located here is in line with this timing mark on the casting. Just like so. Now, lift the sewing head back up. Push up on this gear while applying some down pressure on the cedar and retighten this screw. Now, lower the sawing head, move the cedar to the next timing mark that is located on the casting, like so. With this screw located right here, loose, hold the sear in the position where the timing marks are matched, located down here where we showed you earlier, and turn the needle bar mechanism so that it is in line with this bracket located right here. These must line up. Once this is achieved, take your three millimeter Allen wrench, push up on this gear here, 
and tighten the three millimeter Allen screw. End of adjustment. If in the event that this timing belt were to break or need replacement, it will be necessary first take these two screws out, loosen this screw, this screw, also the screw located up in this hole and the other one located here. Remove the thread guide and the screw that holds it on then you will have to loosen the screws on the collar and this shaft located here will move to the right. You will pull these shafts out. At that point in time, untie the wick located here, then slide this back and then it will fall, it will drop down. Then this right here will also drop down. At that point in time, you'll be able to remove the timing belt. Then we put your new one back on. Um, also, you'll have to uh, loosen the idler pulley. Put, pull your old belt off. Then put your new belt back on. Then retighten the idler pulley, which is done by these two screws located right here. Then replace these two components located right here. Reinsert the shafts. Put the thread guide back on. These two screws here. Tighten all the screws. Once that is done, you will loosen this screw right here. Once that screw is loosened, then you will rotate this pulley here counterclockwise till you feel it bottom out, making sure at that point that this screw located here is facing so that you can get to it. If it is not, then loosen the idler pulley, re remove the belt, Turn this so that the screw will be in the proper position when this is located here. Put the belt back on, tighten up the idler pulley, and then bring this to the bottom belt position. Then lower the sewing head. Move the cedar so that the timing mark is located right there. Raise the sewing head back, tighten the screw, at that point in time you'll move to the next timing mark, make sure that these two portions right here are aligned, if not, Come back here, loosen this Allen screw using your left hand to hold the needle bar area and your right hand to hold the cedar. Then you will turn the needle bar so that this portion is aligned while this cedar mark is aligned with the first uh, mark on the uh, casting and then push up on this gear and retighten the screw.